All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Wendy. And uh, with us on the phone is uh, Genoa Kingston head football coach uh, Bill McCarty. Well, last week, uh, Coach McCarty, you told PD uh, that it was going to be a playoff game, and it seems like a uh, playoff game atmosphere, it seems like it was, uh, with uh, you guys uh, falling just short uh, to Oregon 22-21. Right. It, 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 you know, it was a very competitive game. It didn't start out that way. Uh, we didn't play very well the first, uh, really probably the first half, but it uh, it was one of those tales of uh, two different halves, and uh, it came up just a little short, which was very disappointing for the coaches, but especially the players. Yeah, I got. Uh, we had an update uh, during uh, the uh, first half of uh, our game on Friday, and I uh, heard that you guys uh, were trailing, and I said, oh, that doesn't sound like uh, Joe Kingston. Uh, so during uh, halftime, uh, what did you say to kind of turn things around? I would not prefer to say it on the radio, actually. <laughs> we didn't do any type of adjustments, really. It was just a matter of uh, trying to tell the kids to man up and uh, um, play better. Well, whatever it was, it, uh, it worked because uh, you guys made it a close game. Uh, now, at the end, you guys, uh, Rob uh, Thrumbly had a, a touchdown. Then you guys uh, decided to go for uh, two points instead of the extra points. Uh, kind of what was the idea there? Well, there's a couple things, uh, thoughts behind that. In fact, during the game, uh, Clayton Johnson, one of the assistant coaches, you know, said, Coach, if we score here, you know, eventually are you going to go for uh, two? And I hadn't really put much thought about it. And we had practiced a uh, fake extra point all week where um, our, our holder, who was Ethan Mingus, had a choice of uh, running the ball because they like to, uh, Oregon would like to come off the edge real hard and we could uh, do an uh, option or he had the option to throw it too. And uh, he saw a guy closing in on him quick and he pitched the ball. But the, the thing about that whole extra point is, when we did that, there was still almost seven minutes left in the game, and we're thinking, too, we still have a shot at getting the ball and uh, driving it down again, which actually we did. We got down to the, uh, you know, about the 12-yard line, but uh, the problem that hurt was the uh, young man that Ethan pitched it to during the two-point conversion was our kicker, and our kicker got hurt. Oh, okay. And he wasn't able to kick. So on fourth down and and uh, ten, we could have kicked a field goal and hopefully may. I mean, there's no guarantee we would have made it, but we would have had a chance to win it with a field goal too. But at that time, we had to go for it on fourth and ten with about two minutes to go because our kicker was hurt. All right, uh, and then uh, uh, so coming out of the uh, second uh, half, you guys of course got some offense, uh, but your uh, defense also uh, shut down Oregon. Yeah, our, and, and I guess that was kind of a disappointing thing in the first half. You know, you practice all week, but one thing you can never do, and I think it's hard for even colleges and, of course, pros, is assimilate what the other team does. I mean, we practice it all week, but, you know, their kids run the offense a lot, lot you know, a lot better, and, and their, their uh, first teamers are bigger, and they came off the ball well, and it was just kind of maybe one of those things where, um, you know, we, we just didn't start off well, whether that was uh, coaching and, and getting the kids prepared or whatever, but uh, it took us a good half to get going. Uh, but, yeah, once you guys uh, did get going, uh, you, got, you guys proved uh, that you could. And then uh, going back to uh, offense, uh, quarterback uh, Craig Billing was uh, 12 for uh, 20 with 121 yards and uh, 15 carries for 45 yards. Uh, how do you think he did? Well, he did well. In fact, probably he, I, I didn't hear the uh, carries there for yardage. Actually, he broke a uh, long run for about 72 yards, um, which got us our second score that really kind of uh, put a little uh, uh, motivation and uh, momentum to our side. But, uh, you know, he, he threw the ball well. We were really sprinting out. And, uh, and we had some drop passes, which uh, you know, all teams have. And then we missed some receivers that were open, too. But overall... Uh, he he, uh, he did a nice job. And some other uh, positive notes on offense. Uh, junior running back uh, Rob Thrumbly with uh, 11 carries and 61 yards. And your receivers, uh, uh, Volkling and Mengus, had uh, 10 catches between them uh, for 104 yards. Uh, so uh, not bad there either. No, our, our, our receivers have uh, come on. And, uh, you know, when you're open, you, it, it's easy to sit there and you want to just yell, you know, when a, when a receiver drops the ball, catch the ball. But... I mean, that's just a no-brainer. The kids know they need to catch the ball. It's just something that you just uh, swallow. Uh, and so, uh, you know, such a close game. Uh, kind of uh, is, is looking towards the rest of the season. Kind of what do you take away from a game like this? Well, it, it's hard. And it's, uh, you know, because everyone's uh, basically depressed. You know, it was a big game for us. And, uh, 
you, you come up uh, basically a foot short on the last play of the well, or last play for us. Um, it's fourth and uh, ten, and uh, we come out about uh, nine yards. You know, we're nine yards. We're about a yard short, and and it's it's just hard to get the kids up. But if you don't get up and uh, pick yourself up by the bootstraps, you you know we we have another very very tough opponent, maybe the best team in the state in Class Three A in Stillman. Um, they're really on a roll. They they uh, they're coached very well, and uh, um, you know we're going to have to play very very well this week. Uh, so looking uh, forward to uh, Stillman Valley, kind of what are going to be the keys of victory there? Well, there's going to be a lot of keys. First of all, we got to <clears throat> we got to be able to tackle. They got two fullbacks. They're brothers. One's a junior. One's a senior. Uh, their last name is Cox, and they they're they're big kids. They're six foot, probably 215 pounds, and they run low. They uh, they really get after you. Stillman's known for their option football. Uh, we got to have to tackle. Um, we can't turn the ball over. We got to play field position. Kind of the stuff you probably should do week in and week out. But uh, this week you got to really stress it. Uh, but uh, how great would it be to come away with a victory there? <laughs> well, that, that, that would be pretty exciting. Uh, and I think the kids would be, uh, uh, you know, that that'd be one of a uh, that'd be a big upset. But uh, you know, I think our kids are up for the challenge. Um, you know, and, and I, I believe we'll uh, play well. A very good. Well, uh, best of luck, and we'll talk to you again uh, next week. Well, thank you very much. Take care. All right. Uh, that's Judo at Kingston head coach uh, Bill McCarty, who is uh, actually uh, at a conference in Palatine, but made sure uh, he could uh, step away for a second to uh, talk to us here, as he does every week on uh, Wednesday mornings on 1360 WLBK. So uh, a big thank you to uh, Coach McCarty uh, for making time for us this morning. Uh, this check of sports brought to you by State Farm agent Scott Zyman at 2587 Sycamore Road in the Target Aldi Shopping Center. Uh, we'll check your 1360 WLBK five-day forecast next here.